Hello and welcome. It looks unstoppable. A portfolio that obliterates the S&P 500. But here's the truth. Most strategies collapse the moment they face reality. In this video we put sharp ratio optimization through hell. Randomized assets, shifting timeframes, out of sample gauntlets, no safety nets, no cherry picking, just raw statistical warfare. And by the end you'll see not just when it wins, but when it fails hard and why that could save your portfolio. We start with five well-known tech stocks, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon and Meta. These are not random, they've historically performed well. We compute daily returns and use them to estimate two things, annualized mean returns and the annualized covariance metrics. These two metrics form the input to our optimizer. Now here's the core idea. We want to find a set of portfolio weights that maximizes the sharp ratio. But optimizers in Python always minimize. So we define a function that returns the negative sharp ratio. So let's break it down. The numerator is the expected return of the portfolio. That's the dot products of weights and expected returns. The denominator is the portfolio volatility, which is the square root of the dot product of the weights vector transposed and the resulting dot product of weights and covariance metrics. The constraints are critical. We want the weights to sum to one, which means we are fully invested. That's enforced with a linear equality constraint. We also set bounds so that no weight goes below zero or above one, which ensures we are long only and not using any leverage. We pass these into the optimizer along with an initial guess that is equal weights across all assets. So for a five asset portfolio, you have a weight of 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. This is what you're passing as an initial guess. The optimizer then searches for the best possible allocation under those rules. We are taking those resulting weights and apply them to the full return history. This gives us a cumulative portfolio return that is by construction optimized on the full data set or the full time horizon. And if we scroll down, as you see, I'm also pulling the S&P 500 data here. So in specific, I'm taking the SPY ETF and then plot both together to compare the optimized portfolio with the S&P 500. And this is what we are getting. So you see this crazy outperformance of the optimized portfolio in comparison with the S&P 500 ETF. Just to give you a perspective. So if you take the S&P as per 2015, comparing it with today, the S&P roughly 2x, right? So out of 100 US dollar, you would have made 200 US dollar. It's a bit more than that, but just take it as roughly 2x. Now your portfolio would have given you 14x your capital. So 100 would be 1.4k US dollar. So an unbelievable and crazy performance. Obviously completely unrealistic because we use future data to make decisions. And that's what we're going to fix in the next step. To eliminate forward looking bias, we use a rolling out of sample backtest. Here's how it works. We define two window sizes, a training window here, 756 trading days or roughly three years and a test window, 63 days or about three months. We loop through the data in fixed steps, namely test size steps. At each step, we slice out the training window. That is historical returns 
the model would have seen. Then compute the annualized mean and covariance based only on that slice. Then we run the optimizer again with constraints and bounds and apply the resulting weights to the test window that is the future in quotation marks from that point in time. Then we roll the window forward by 63 days and repeat the whole process. This structure mimics a real world investor who re-optimizes every three months using only the past three years of data. At no point does the optimizer get a sneak peek at the future. We saw each test period return and stitch them together to form a realistic return curve. This is what separates a credible strategy from a fantasy backtest. When we plot the cumulative performance of that, again benchmarked against the SPY, we see already a different picture than before. So this is telling us that the optimized strategy is yielding roughly 4x while the S&P, again, is yielding roughly 2x. We cut off three years here, so that's important to note here. But again, this is not yet the full story. Because you don't know, maybe your strategy was performing good because you picked this time period, which covers bad time periods, but you were by chance in better time periods and skipped some bad periods. So what we wanna do is change the time period. So we do the exact same thing. So this rolling out of sample back test on a different time period. This is what I'm doing here. So I'm building a subset of returns and just pick 2018 until 2022. And as you know, there's a big, big crisis within this time period. And we are doing the exact same thing. So we're running the rolling backtest function from above and take a look at a different time period and compare the S&P 500 versus our optimized strategy. And what you see here is a totally different story. Now you see that the S&P clearly outperformed the optimized portfolio here. So, a strategy that works well in one environment but collapses in another isn't robust. This test helps us expose that fragility. The same logic produces different outcomes depending on the market backdrop. Now let's push this framework further by completely changing the asset selection. Instead of handpicking tech winners, which we did, we test the method on five random stocks from the S&P 500. So what I'm doing here is I'm scraping the full list of S&P 500 tickers using pandas from Wikipedia. Then I'm fixing a random seed that is just keeping stuff reproducible. So if you pick five tickers, you want to know which five tickers these are. If you pick random tickers and set a seed, you know these are your tickers. And if you pick the same seed again, you're getting the exact same tickers here. All right, so this is just for reproducibility. Then, as you see, I'm downloading stuff for those random tickers. So stuff, not stuff, but <laughs> stock prices and calculate returns. And then I'm doing exactly what I did before. Do a rolling back test and take a look at the performance. So let's take a look at what we are getting here. So we have random tickers, MS, BAC, ACAM, PG, and D. And you already see the S&P 500 would outperform the random ticker portfolio. Now, if I'm just getting rid of this random seed, so the random selection is not reproducible anymore, then I'm getting new random tickers here. So I'm getting different random tickers. And if I'm running this, just getting some random uh, stocks from the S&P 500. And now finally, there is some <laughs> very high performing one, which I already see here, probably coin, but also AFGO as far as I uh, know, 
those were crazy stocks and you see this portfolio is totally outperforming it. So it can also go in this direction. And by the way, if you set the seed just to make this clear, you are getting the same stocks as uh, in the beginning again, right? MS, BAC, ACAM, Procter & Gamble, and DE here. But if you set the uh, seed away here, you get another selection of coins. So in this case, CPay coin, FGO, PPL, AVB, also outperforming clearly. Let's run this once again. So now getting a portfolio of whatever that is, Procter Gamble, Uber, KR, Anet, and this is nearly the same as the S&P 500. So I think you you get uh, this the point here, right? But even on this, there's a twist. Even this test you just saw, so taking everything into account, even this contains bias, namely survivorship bias. We are pulling tickers from the current S&P 500, which only includes companies that are still standing. Stocks that went bankrupt, got delisted, or quietly faded away aren't included. So even our random set is still biased towards success stories. At this point, we have tested the same optimization logic three times. First, with hand-picked tech stocks, then on different market periods, and finally with five randomly selected S&P 500 names. Takeaway is simple. This method can produce strong results, but only under certain conditions. Change the time window or the stock universe and performance shifts. That's not a bug, that's reality. Financial markets evolve and your strategy needs to be tested under different assumptions before you can trust it. We didn't even consider transaction costs, delistings, rebalancing, slippage, all of which would erode returns further. So if you are serious about backtesting, make sure you are stress testing it too. Thanks a lot for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Cheers, bye bye.